Now, on with the medical explorer. The concept of blood transfusion, taking blood from one individual and giving it to another individual, has its roots in Greek mythology. However, the idea of auto-transfusion, or reusing blood that is lost from an individual, and giving it back to the same person is a much newer technique. Situations where a person is losing a great deal of blood, such as during surgery of the heart, or repair of gunshot wounds requires tremendous amounts of blood to keep an individual alive. Blood transfusion, which restores this lost blood, of course requires a donor. Blood transfusion also has the slight risk of exposing the patient to hepatitis and even AIDS. Well, a new highly sophisticated device is now available and being regularly used by surgeons in the Yuba Sutter area. The new ultra-modern machine which allows the safe reuse of one's own blood during surgery will now be demonstrated for us at the Fremont Medical Center in Yuba City. I'm pleased to be back in the Fremont Medical Center emergency room today with two very special guests. You've met Dr. Timothy Sloan, our area's best cardiovascular surgeon, and Diane Phipps, our other guest tonight, is our staff nurse from the Fremont operating room. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Before we get into the actual cell saver device, could you, Tim, tell us about your background a little bit and what you're doing in town? I uh, finished general surgery in uh, Highland General Hospital in Oakland and then went to uh, University of Texas Southwestern in Dallas for my cardiac and thoracic training. And I came back to California uh, and uh, the Yuba City area because there was a need for a cardiothoracic surgeon. And so what types of work have you been doing in this community since you've been here? Uh, lung operations, uh, operations on the esophagus, operations on hearts, and um, trauma patients. Major accidents, gunshot wounds. That's right. I've heard you've been sewing up hearts in the operating room lately. Isn't that true? We've had about five or six since I've been here, and everyone that has had an injury to the heart has been saved. I think that's fantastic. Diane, where did you get your training? I graduated from nursing school in San Francisco, St. Francis Hospital. And how long have you been here at Fremont? Uh, this four years. Four years. Mm -hmm. Very good. Well, tell us about this device. You can actually reuse a person's blood. Is that correct? That's correct. Tell us a little about that. Well, this is uh, the Cell Saver 3, which is just about the best uh, unit on the market. The Cell Saver 4, which Hemonetics puts out, is really their finest model. And um, this machine suctions the blood out of a cavity, which is what collects the blood, and puts it into a saline uh, wash and then recycles it back to the patient. And so they are getting their own blood back. Tim, what's the history of this? How long has this idea been thought of as actually using a patient's own blood to give it back to them? The first idea was uh, devised approximately 110 years ago in England. And the uh, English physician was an obstetrician. And he felt uh, that we should be able to do auto transfusion uh, in one of his patients who died of a postpartum hemorrhage. So we're actually, a person's bleeding, perhaps during surgery, and then you're taking that blood and giving it back to them without having to take anyone else's blood. That's correct. Now this must save a lot of risk here. We're preventing some risks. What type of risks are we preventing by using this technique? Well, it has several advantages. One, uh, the it is so rapid to retransfuse this blood, it takes somewhere between seven and 10 minutes. That's faster than we can actually get it from the blood bank. Uh, two, it is the patient's own blood. We don't have to worry about uh, possible transfusion reactions, possible venereal disease, hepatitis, or even AIDS. That we all have heard in the news media the fact that if you get a blood transfusion, there is that risk of getting a disease like hepatitis or AIDS. And by using your own blood, that's just not a possibility. That's correct. Are there any areas here where we don't know much about certain areas, or is it really a good, solid technique? This technique has been used in heart surgery for probably about 15 years, and we do it on every single case that we have, so we're very comfortable with it. 
and it's being used more for obst obstetrics, uh, orthopedics, and vascular surgery, major vascular surgery. Is there some reason why every patient might not someday ask their surgeon to use something like this? But sometimes it's not economical. The actual cost of the setup is somewhere around about $200, and that's for the tubing um, and the collection reservoir. We tried to figure out exactly how much blood would be used during that case and find out how much it actually costs the patient, uh, either at Fremont or Rideout, and see if there is a cost-benefit in there. But Diane, you were actually mentioning that there's some relationship between a certain number of units of blood that would have to be used before I, this would be economical? Yes, I think that they say that it's about two units of blood. That uh, with the cost for processing uh, the blood and so forth, that the ho the software is paid for with just about by giving two units of blood. By software, you mean the plastic tubing and the different materials that you're going right. to show us. Yes. Could you show us where the tubing actually is? Let, let's imagine that blood was being taken from someone's abdominal cavity because they were having major abdominal surgery and brought into the machine. Where would that actually go through the machine? Okay, well, with this tip right here that goes in onto the sterile field where the, doc the surgeon is operating, um, this is called a suction tip, and it goes in and it draws up the blood. And I think rather than explaining it through, I will just run through the whole technique with the blood that we have here. Wait, okay. Dr. Sloan, where did this blood come from that you have today? Well, this is donated from the uh, Fremont Medical Center um, uh, blood bank. It is out-of-date blood. It's important to imagine that a person might be bleeding heavily during surgery, and so this could be a chest or an abdomen where the blood is being sucked into the suction device. Diane, where's the blood actually going now? Okay, the blood is now coming into the reservoir. You can see that this is filling up. Here is the blood coming right here. This is coming from the patient. Now, it is being mixed with an anticoagulant to prevent the blood clotting from the patient, and it comes into the suction setup and mixes with the blood, and then it comes into the reservoir. When the, the level of the blood gets to be about one liter or a thousand cc's, which we are rapidly approaching that, I will then push what is called the fill button. And I will go ahead and do that now because I think we have probably enough to start. So I push fill. Okay, at this point, the blood leaves the reservoir and goes into this bulb that is this uh, bell jar, which acts as a centrifuge, and as you can see, the red blood cells are coming up in this bowl. It then separates the red cells from um, the plasma, the antibiotic irrigations, which might have been used, or um, any, any type of irrigation. Once the cells are separated, it is by using a salt solution that hangs here off the sides, the red blood cells are washed. So now, right over here on this dial, you can see that this many cc's or milliliters of saline is going in to wash. One liter or 1,000 milliliters will be used to wash everything out of the red blood cells. This is where um, all of the irrigation and the uh, patient's plasma are being separated out. This is the refuse bag. Dr. Sloan, we've heard now about plasma and serum and irrigation solutions and red blood cells. While we're waiting for the cell saver to actually do its thing, could you explain to our viewers more about what all these terms mean in relation to blood? Basically, the blood is whole blood that we obtain from the patient, and it appears as the first tube that you can see. It um, is dark and red, and it is a combination of red blood cells and plasma. So that's if someone cuts their finger, this is what they see coming out of their finger. It's the whole blood. That's right. The second tube shows what happens after a whole blood is centrifuged down like we're doing with the autotransfusion. And in the top, you will see plasma. A small little layer just underneath that is the white blood cells. And just below that is the packed cells, which we will be giving back to the patient. The third tube shows what happens, or the actual blood that we will be giving back to the patient.
That is called packed red blood cells. Then there's the remaining tube there, which is that yellow continuous solution. What is that yellow fluid there? Well, that's plasma, and that is the, unfortunately, the only thing that we lose with the uh, concentration that we're doing over here. That's what would be in the discard bag. Well, I think the machine's about ready. Why don't we head back to there? What has happened now is that this entire container of the saline or the salt solution has washed all of the cells that were down in the jar. The red blood cells now have been pumped up into this infusion bag. The, um, the plasma and the other irrigating solutions and so forth have gone into this waste bag. And so now everything has been separated out and the patient's red blood cells have been placed in this IV bag and it's now ready to be uh, administered to the patient. During the first few months of operation, the Cell Saver machine has been successfully used more than 50 times in our community. Remember that the Cell Saver tool is not recommended for all types of surgery and that blood transfusions will continue to be the major method of blood replacement when small amounts of blood are needed. If you have additional questions about this new piece of modern technology, then you should discuss them with your surgeon.